It's yours. Working. It is working. Okay. Hello, everyone. I think it's uh, the very last chance for enjoying the beach, and everybody just all of a sudden this morning woke up and realized that oh, we are out of time. So everybody's enjoying their time. I really appreciate you are here in this room. It's my birthday actually, and <laughs> you are my. Thank you very much. So I really do my best to help uh, with your appetite just before the lunch, and I try to be as uh, quick, fast, right to the point as possible. Mazdaq uh, Nikbert, I'm an associate professor from Concordia University in Montreal, and uh, complexity is the name of my lab. We do three major things, digitalization, automation, digital twinning, and over the past three years, uh, circular economy and deconstruction. And uh, this is the superstar author of the paper, Rafaela Peniza, my uh, PhD student. Rafa is the captain of the varsity tennis team at Concordia. She's a professional tennis player. And I don't know, her part-time job is caring about sustainability and doing PhD in my lab. Uh, what I'm presenting here is the result of uh, what she did over the past year, year and a half. Um, so I, I don't think I need to spend much time on emphasizing how important it is to be sustainable and how much uh, different governments, local, provincial, and federal governments are putting into uh, decarbonization of the built environment, controlling the energy consumption, reducing the GH emissions, and so on and so forth. So I won't bore you with that, but the point is uh, when it comes to the built environment, the starting point is uh, knowing the demand, the energy demand of the building. Uh, that usually is done through building performance analysis simulation. So we built a simulation model of the building. We model the geometry, the spaces, the envelope, uh, the mechanical system, the schedule, the weather file, and so on and so forth. When we run simulation to see what's the expected uh, energy consumption of the building. That is used for later on for energy auditing, energy monitoring, design, and so on and so forth. When it comes to city level, however, well, the things sh are expected to work the same way. However, there is tons of more complications involved. Uh, starting with our geometry models, the 3D models of the city are usually not as uh, complex or as detailed as we expect from a BIM, for example. Uh, in my lab, we use CityGML as a data standard for, for modeling that urban scale. Well, it's open, it's semantics, ex and extendables. It's a very good um, equivalent to IFC, but at city level. Um, though the existing CityGML models, the ones that you can uh, basically use from your probably city open data catalog, are of low LODs. Well, CTGML does have LODs similar to BIM. Uh, usually, we're talking about LOD2. In Montreal, every five years, we renew our CTGML models of the entire city, and they are at LOD2 or LOD2.5. The last version is 2016. What you see here is the result of a stitching uh, the neighborhood of my uh, basically home university campus. The building in yellow is where our offices and the surrounding buildings are the ones uh, that we have in the neighborhood. Look at this model and what you see, like I said, it's announced as LOD 2.5, which is nothing but the geometry, boxes, the roof shape, and the 0.5 is the texture, which is a useless, to, to, from the viewpoint of anything other than representation, is a useless image which is attached to, to the buildings. Now, if you want to use this for energy simulation, which actually is the common practice, at least in the North America, and I think it's the same in Europe, a lot of assumptions must be made about the envelope. The material, the type of windows, the size of windows, U-value, SAGC, just name it. Uh, and that's problematic. Uh, the beginning point is I come from cold climate and it's very important to know how much window we have uh, in the exterior walls. That's ba basically for heat uh, uh, transmission. And um, we don't know that. So in practice, what people do, what energy consultants do, they make assumptions. They assume that 30% of the walls are windows, which guess what? It's far from the reality, and that's why the results of simulation, like people make fun of us when we see a huge gap between the result of simulation and the actual 
energy consumption. This project was hopeful to create an automated process to calculate the actual window to wall ratio for different facades of a building and we were opting for a scalable solution. We cannot go building by building, facade by facade, and calculate the area of window, area of the wall, and see what's the window to wall ratio. We want the solution to be automated and to be able to scale it up. And what we thought, I mean, the method, I mean, the, the basically the secret sauce of this solution was, why not going out to Google Street View images? We actually have good presentation of every single building's facade calculate the window to wall ratio and assign it back to our city GML model. And that's what we're trying to do. So we looked at the literature um, with the great advancement with the computer vision and uh, basically image processing. Um, we looked at the possibilities for what we want to do. There are two major applications, the image segmentation and image classification. I trust that most of us in this room are familiar with them, the image classification is show me the picture and I tell you what type of building it is. That's not what we want for this specific project. Image segmentation is actually what we're using for this project. So give me the picture. I do a basically pixel wide classification and I tell you where are the windows, where is the wall and then do the calculation by dividing the number of pixels going to each. The problem though is the, um, the extraction of the windows and walls at the largest scale is not that simple. Once again, we need to, to come up with a solution that works on something as Google Street View, not as individual images. Um, well, there are two types of images that can be used for this purpose, the street views and laser scan generated images. I s like some of the presentations in this session and the ones earlier in the conference, we're using the scan generated uh, based either point clouds or, or images. Cool, amazing, if that's available, use it. That, not work, that not, won't work for what we want to do. Um, so we want to use street view images. And in order to train a model that can do all this thing, like the semantic segmentation through street view, we use a data set openly available called CMP facade. That's the center for machine perception. And they have issued this data set, which has 606 facade images from different countries, from Argentina, Greece, the United States, Germany, and so on and so forth. It's a good representative of different archetypes. And uh, it's labeled. The cool thing is it's pre it comes pre-labeled. There are 12 different things that are labeled in these images, uh, including the window and wall that we want, but also balconies, doors, and so on and so forth. So what we did was because we were only interested in the wall and windows and non-building things, in the data preparation, we basically reduced those labels into three major labels, as you see in the bottom right window, a wall, and a background. So anything which is not uh, basically the facade of the building. And then we trained a CNN, back to, back to CNN thing that I, the chair just mentioned a few seconds ago. Um, we're using a UNET. Th those who are familiar, UNET architecture has basically four major components, encoder, decoder, excitation, and final convolution layer. And I won't, again, bore you with the details. I trust that the ones who are interested know already how it works. But usually optimization of something like UNET can start from the pre-trained models. There are tons of pre-trained models. When we thought instead of reinventing the wheel in the basic, let's go to them and do the fine tuning of the existing pre-trained ones. We found 32 different pre-trained uh, models. And you see some of them, the, the, the big ones are here. So we, th we thought to test with the existing one to see if they give us the accuracy that we expect. Let's not forget the training is still happening on that data set, which is not the Google Street View, the, the CMP data set. And uh, the question is how well the model that we train will work on actual Google Street View images. Um, so we collected a number of Google Street View images as well, the third 30 to be exact. The 30 were some, some sort of cherry picked to represent not only the ideal cases, but also cases of buildings with different view angles, with different uh, things blocking the image, like trees, pedestrians, city furniture, and so on and so forth, and different forms of buildings. 
Um, yes, the data set is small, but it's a good representative of type of buildings that we're expecting. They are all from, of course, Montreal, Canada, because the project was done for that region. So let's look at the results, starting with optimized architecture. Uh, out of those 32 pre-trained models, 20 showed poor performance in the first stage that we did a visual screening of the results. These are two examples, the DenseNet 121 and MobileNet. As you see, the results are not very impressive. What you see in the far right is the prediction coming out of these architectures. 20 out of 32 were showing these type of poor results because we're not only expecting a black box that spits out a num a WWR, a window to a ratio, which is correct. We want to make sure that the machine is actually learning what it's doing and the results are feasible. So long story short, 20 were dropped at this point and then we went after the IOU to see among the 12 remaining ones which one is giving us the best performance. What you see in this chart, the vertical axis is the IOU, which we use as the measure of accuracy. The horizontal one is the number of features used. And as you see, uh, it's not always the case that the more number of attributes, the higher IOU. You can, you can see that with some of the pre-trained models like VGG, if you see it, basically we're using more attributes and we're losing the IOU. But we thought to be greedy, we went with the one which is maximizing the IOU and that's ResNext 101. So that pre-trained model won among the 32. And when we applied it, when we trained the model with this architecture, we saw that the accuracies are impressive, are good enough. So the, the accuracy over the training set was 0.9, over the test set was 0.85. The accuracy of detecting the wall uh, was 0.891 or 89.1%. Uh, sorry, 96.1% and for Windows were 89.1%. The numbers are cool, right? So happy days, honeymoon, we're very, we're great. We basically uh, cured the cancer and everything. The problem though, for those who are interested in problems, started when we showed the never seen before Google Street images to the model. And the results were disappointing. So the average IOU that you could get on Google Street View images is 0.5. And when I, in my machine learning course, I tell my students that if you train a classifier prediction model with accuracy of 0.5, don't bother. Just pick up a coin, flip the coin, and that gives you the same level of accuracy. So if it's 0.5, you don't have a classifier, you don't have a prediction model. Well, gloomy days, end of life, let's commit to suicide, but not so early. Uh, we went through the 30 images actually, and we asked ourselves why the accuracies are so low. We had two basically suspicion. One was the angle of view, and the other one was the noise. Well, it turned out that for the buildings, the building types that we are interested in, low and medium rise buildings, and hopefully in Q&A if anybody wants to know why those buildings, I can answer that. Um, for those buildings, the angle of view is not of an issue. And we also found that this 0.5 as an average is the result of a number, good number of high and uh, good performance classification or predictions and a handful of terrible, terrible IOUs. So it's not like we, it's half and half. No, we, we had the number of, like, uh, number of good predictions and a few poor performances. Here is an example of the ones with poor performance. Almost every single case of poor performance was due to a blockage. Some, something was blocking the, 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 the view, and that's why the machine was confused. Well, of course, the method that we took was simplistic. We only looked at two main classes, window and wall. This issue can be easily resolved by adding more semantic classes. Let's go for city furniture, human, cars, I don't know, trees, and whatever is blocking the window. So. Let's continue, let's uh, not commit a suicide and maybe there is a hope for getting there. Um, and there is a hope for getting there actually. So I'm gonna finish with this uh, before my, my conclusion uh, slide. And this is the workflow of what we're doing. I hope it's clear why we're doing that. So basically we start with um, the city GML model, existing models for majority of European cities and some of the North American cities. We identify each of the buildings. We find the counterpart, like the actual building through zip code and uh, latitude, longitude. We look them up in the Google Street map. 
it's easier said than done because there are four facades or can be up to four facades finding the right facade i won't go there that's in a different publication but once the the building is identified on google street view we introduce it into the image segmentation model that we have we identify the window to wall ratio and then assign it back as an attribute to the building to the different facades through the energy ADE, which is an application domain extension for energy simulation in city GML. And the result, the enriched model is sent into simulation models, which in the back end use energy plus and so on for, for energy simulation. I'm specifically showing uh, Simstat because it's directly working with city GML models, but we we'll also use uh, UMI in my lab for those type of purposes. So this is the last slide. Well, in general, to summarize, the work was done to try to tackle the problems related lack of LOD or lack of information that, is, that are needed at urban scale digital models. The results are somewhat promising. There's more work to be done. We're currently, like the limitations that we had was the building types. Of course, we are trained over six and 606 building types. Not, it doesn't cover everything. And the noise is the major limitation. We're working on those two at this point. So in case you find this interesting, uh, we're very open and receptive to collaborations. That's the uh, basically scan that uh, that uh, QR code and take a look at the lab uh, and what's happening there. We'll be more than happy to have collaboration um, internationally. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mazdaq, for amazing and very clear presentation.